I want to take a couple minutes here to review to make sure you guys understand how the properties of sound waves are related to what we hear when we actually hear sound. Of course, I think you guys all know that pitch goes with frequency, and the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. Okay, um, That one's pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. The other thing that we really listen for is loudness. Okay, And loudness is related to the intensity of the sound, or how much energy is actually hitting your eardrum. But it's it's interesting. We can measure this, but what we do is we measure we measure pressure level, okay, or sound pressure level. Now, if you think about it, um, there's always air pressure all around us all the time. There's little particles of air that are bouncing around, little atoms, right? They hit our eardrum. We don't really hear that. That's background noise. We don't detect it because our bodies are permeable so the the pressure balances in fact if you've ever had your ears pop that's the internal pressure in your ears balancing with the external pressure we don't hear that but we do hear compressions so if some vibrating source compresses a whole bunch of these particles together and then of course you have the rarefaction where these ones got stretched out so these ones could get pressed together this wave travels and vibrates our ear this difference in pressure from high pressure and low pressure compared to background pressure is what sound pressure is. And it's related to um, loudness, right? The bigger that pressure difference is, the louder we're going to hear it. And the scale we use for this is the decibel scale. Okay, Decibels, uh, lowercase d, capital B, deci for 10, b for bell, uh, the the guy who named it right or worked with it a lot. Now the decibel scale is weird. Zero decibels. Uh, zero decibels is barely audible. Okay. Twenty decibels is a thousand times more pressure. Okay. And you're gonna hear this as about oh four times louder than this. Okay? What what what's typical is ten decibels we hear is um, times two for loudness. So every time the, the decibel increases by two, our, our brains and ears detect that as as or multiplying the loudness by two. The decibel scale is set up on a log base scale. Okay? Where a change of twenty decibels is a change of a thousand times pressure. So this is like uh, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth Pascal's pressure difference. And so this would be 2 times 10 to the negative third. It's 10 times bigger. Okay, 40 decibels is 10 times bigger again. So 2 times 10 to the negative 2. Anyways, that's how the decibel scale works. And since this, this would be 8 times louder, right? Well, times 2 times 4 times 8 times 16 okay this this would be really loud okay and so it doesn't take very long on the decibel scale before a big before a small change makes a makes a big difference in loudness okay now a sound wave is just like any other wave so the frequency and the wavelength are still inversely related uh, and this equation still works okay wavelength times frequency equals velocity okay uh, and to change this, we need to change the medium. And there's a there's a whole table of speeds in different media for air, with different temperatures, different materials for sound on page 405 in your book. And what I want to do is I want to run through uh, an example problem real quick on how um, we use this equation uh, and and how we can use it for sound. Okay. So the practice problems in your book are pretty straightforward. Number one on page 405 says find the wavelength in air at 20 degrees Celsius okay right now they're telling us about the medium so I go find on the table in air at 20 degrees Celsius the speed of uh, sound is 343 meters per second okay um, of an 18 hertz sound wave okay so now I know the frequency 18 hertz okay so I mean now it's just a matter of using this equation I don't even have to finish okay um, 
The rest of those problems, those are pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go through a whole bunch of those, okay? Um, but one of the cooler things that we hear in in sound is is the Doppler effect, right? Our ears detect pitch, and I think I showed you guys this little demo, okay? A sound source produces waves, and they move out from that source in all directions, nice, equal, even, okay? But if this sound source is moving this direction, then the waves in the front get pushed into each other a little bit, so their frequency increases, and the waves in the back get stretched out a little bit, and so their frequency decreases. So if you're standing up here, you're going to hear this higher pitch noise, and if you're standing back here, you're going to hear this lower pitch noise. Okay? And the equation for using this, or solving for what, what frequency you're actually going to hear, okay? and we ran through this um, on last week, frequency of the detector is given by um, the frequency of the source times this ratio, the velocity of the sound wave minus the velocity of the detector okay, over the velocity of the sound wave minus the velocity of the source, okay, Vs. Okay. Now one of these can be in both in motion, both of them can be in motion, they can be moving towards each other, they can be moving away from each other, okay, and you got to pay attention to sign a little bit, but the problems are going to stay pretty straightforward. Okay, so I want to run through a quick example on this one, uh, and I'm on page 409 in your book, and on page 409 I want to do number 9. It says a submarine is moving toward another submarine at 9.2 meters per second. So one of our velocities is 9.2, okay, and we're going to have to figure out which one it is, meters per second. It emits a 3.5 megahertz ultrasound. Okay, we just found out the frequency of our wave. 3.5 megahertz, MHZ. Okay, this means uh, times 10 to the 6th hertz. So 3.5 million hertz. Okay. Um, what frequency would the second sub at rest here? Alright, so this sub emitted it, so it's our source. Our second sub is our detector. It's at rest, so it's at zero meters per second. And we're supposed to determine what frequency it's going to hear. So we know the frequency the detector hears is equal to the frequency of the source times the ratio of the differences in their velocities. Okay, so V minus uh, VD over V minus VS. Okay. Now, we need to know this. That's the velocity of the sound wave, okay? Well, we know its frequency, and it says it's moving through uh, water. And if we look in the table, we know the speed of sound in water, the velocity of the wave, is actually 1,482 meters per second, okay? So, we don't even have to care about this. They're not even going to make us solve for wavelength and get velocity. We can just start plugging in our numbers. So 1,482 minus zero, because our detector's not moving, divided by 1,482 minus 9.2 times the frequency of the source. Okay, It is important then that we make sure our units match. 3.8 times 10 to the sixth. Okay. This is equal to the frequency that the detector hears. Okay. So this is actually going to get a little bit bigger because we're dividing by a number that's a little bit smaller, which makes sense. It's coming towards us. We're going to hear those waves pound up. It should be a higher sound. Okay. So that's how you work one of those problems. It's pretty straightforward. Shouldn't be a big deal to get those done. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm going to have you guys also look at 12 through 17 on page 410. That's kind of a review of the chapter. Um, the problems are pretty straightforward. The Doppler effect, it's cool. Um, you guys are familiar with it when the train goes by and the whistle tone changes. Okay, uh, You're familiar with loudness. You're familiar with pitch. Hopefully this sound wave section is is not so bad. Okay, Good luck.